Uh, anyway, um, <coughs> look, I, I realise we've made a bit of a mistake here. We've, we've gone in at the deep end. Um, fortunately, Ryan is here. He's going to take us back to very first principles. He's a physics student, but he thinks the lecturers have done it all wrong. This is how it should be done. Big round of applause for Ryan. Physics in the pub. So clearly we've got the in the pub part wrong. Let's not get the physics part wrong as well. So physics is concerned with the nature and properties of mass and energy. Subject matter includes mechanics, heat, light, other radiation, sound, electricity, magnetism, and the structure of atoms. So that's what Google says, but that doesn't really give you a good understanding of what it actually is. Physics in the pub. So this is what I'm going to do. This is how I teach physics in the pub. My name's Ryan, and first of all, we've got dimensional analysis. So it sounds scary, but it's actually not. If you're thinking about, whoa, if you're thinking about dimensions like this, 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 or this, then that is unfortunately science fiction. That is what we call a parallel universe. So you're gonna have to put a wall between science fiction and real science. In science, we think of a dimension as a physical measurement, such as time or space. But what are these? These are the seven base SI units. And we're going to get to know them really well. This one is an M&M, &M and it means meters, and it measures distance. If we take three of them, we can now move forward and back, left and right, up and down, in three-dimensional space. These are the things we use in our day-to-day -day lives. If we take two of them, we get an area, like a square. If we add height to it, we get a cube, which has volume. And then we can take all of these and put them to the side. This is time happens in our day-to-day -day lives, and we combine all four of these dimensions, we get the space-time continuum, which is four-dimensional and can be expressed like this. Next is rectilinear motion. We're moving quite quickly. Well. So we've got math, we've got meters and seconds. So we put them to the side, we've got distance and time. Distance, time, speed equals distance over time, quite famously. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put distance over time, but wait a second. This is something you need to know. It's called the law of negative exponents. And it just means that the little fraction line makes it a negative to remind you to put it on the bottom. So we've got per second, and that's frequency. So we're going to put that over there. And now speed becomes this. If you ignore the fact that speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector, we can say that velocity is this. Now, a little bit more maths. We're going to learn a little bit of crash course on calculus. Um, and basically, velocity is just how fast the position changes, and acceleration is the same, how fast the velocity changes. So, we can express velocity in change of position, acceleration change velocity, so acceleration is the change in velocity over time, express it like that. We have position, velocity, acceleration, and if we keep going, then they get sillier and sillier. <laughs> the derivative is also the slope of the line, and if we move them all around and give them different names, we get the Subat equations, which is what we use to solve problems like this. We can work out how high the ball goes. But wait, there's a little bit more. We've got to do it in reverse, the integral calculus. Don't forget to add the plus c. Literally everyone forgets to add the plus c. So basically, velocity is the sum of the change in acceleration. And then the Subat equations are so simple that we can skip over them for time. Now that's meters and seconds. Now we're on to classical mechanics. So we're using these three. So we've used the meters and seconds, distance and time. Now we've got mass. So we've got mass and meters, but mass is not meters. So we're going to put them there so to remind you guys. You've got a volume, things have mass, things take up space. If you put the mass over the space, what that takes is density. Air has density, water has a much greater density, aluminum has a density, so does black hole, and so does black holes, thanks Adele. So we've got water, a thousand, and that's pretty convenient. So we're going one litre is one kilogram. And one milliliter is 20 drops. Not one drop like I thought when I was 14, it's actually 20. Mass is often <laughs> described as weight, but mass is not weight. Weight, mass is the amount of matter in an object, and weight is the force of gravity. Weight is a force, but what is a force? <laughs> a force, quite simply, is a push or a pull. When the apple falls, it's being pulled by the earth. This is force guy, uh, Isaac Newton. Uh, he's the one that got donked on the head by an apple. Um, and he said a couple of things. He said, if you push something, it'll move. If you push a light thing, it'll move more. Um, and he said, if you push something, it'll push back. Thank God he put them in simpler terms and he named them his laws of motion. 
This is the most important one. If you're going to remember anything, remember that. It's so we need velocity and acceleration back. F equals ma, and for gravity on Earth, F equals mg. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.81, but this applies, gravity applies to every object, and this is the law of universal gravitation. And it, gravity gets weaker uh, when you go further away, and this is called the inverse square law. Remember that, it's going to be important later. Um, so since we've, since we've got things moving, they've got mass and velocity, and we've got momentum. Paul Scarsa said momentum, my problems, don't quote me on that, but he did say P equals MB. We're going to put that over there. These two are very similar to each other. Um, velocity is just the change in acceleration over time. Same with momentum. If you want to change something's momentum, you need to apply a force. I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, but it sounds like a lot of work, and it is. Work is force times distance. Work is units of energy. And you can express it with a little bit of algebra to get energy like this. But I know you don't believe me, so let's prove it. E equals mc squared, the most famous equation of all time. If we do a little bit more algebra, we can get it to prove that it's energy. And this is everything we've learned so far. Now for relativity. This is the speed of, this is the speed of light. This is also the speed of light, and we're going to put it over there. It's a constant. If you aren't moving, it applies to all electromagnetic waves. It cannot be exceeded, and it defines the length of a meter. That's a meter, but you know it's about you know a meter length. Um, so let's approach the speed of light. We're going to get hit pretty hard by the Lorentz factor, which increases really, really fast as we get closer to the speed of light. Some funny stuff happens as well. Time dilates, length contracts, mass gets more, and <laughs> energy gets more. So if we compare that, if we've got 99% of the speed of light, one year on Earth feels like seven years, 510 looks like 10 inches, three hours, and then your mass gets more, and increasing your speed is so much harder, it's about a trillion times more difficult. But now for electromagnetism. So we've got a fourth one now, and we're going to add them, and this one is current. Uh, we can't talk about electromagnetism magnetism at all, talking about electricity, and that you need electrons. Electrons are the things that orbit around the nucleus, they have a mass, it's much less than the mass of a proton, they have a charge, which is opposite the mass of a proton, and they also are responsible for current. Current being the quantity of charge flowing past a point over time. It can be measured by voltage and resistance. So we're going to put that over there. And what is voltage and resistance? Well, voltage is what pushes electrons, and resistance is what stops that from happening. So we can make it are all related to each other, and we've got a push. Pushing is work, is energy per charge. So if we do a little bit more algebra, we can prove that voltage is expressed like that. Since we've got resistance over there, we can do the same for resistance. Power is energy over time, and since we know energy, we can get yeah, power and put it over there as well. This is the shallow end of electromagnetism. This is the deep end. This is Maxwell's equations. The first one says, if there's a charge, there'll be a field. The second one says, if there's a magnet, there'll be a field. The third one says, if the magnet moves, there'll be a field. The fourth one says, if a moving charge makes a field. Basically, I just said the same thing four times. But <laughs> it's really important because that means that it's kind of a feedback loop and they can propagate through space. If you weren't convinced about the whole units thing, that I've been doing the whole time, here's some more. <laughs> you know? um, light doesn't have mass, but has energy. So it's dependent on the frequency. High frequency means more energy, and that's Planck's constant. Anyway, that's everything you just learned. Now for thermodynamics. <laughs> now we're adding a fifth one. The fifth one is temperature. This is Kelvin. Zero Kelvin is absolute zero. It's negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Celsius being what we use in our everyday lives. Zero being really cold. Negative 196 being really, really cold, and then zero Kelvin meaning no movement of any atoms whatsoever. At zero degrees Celsius, ice free, water freezes, 100 degrees it boils, and then we're sitting happily in the middle. And then here are the laws, obeying the laws. Zero width doesn't really need to go over. The first one, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Second, heat flows from hot to cold. And the third one, absolute zero is unattainable. We've gotten really close though, really close, but not quite. Convection. Uh, is when a warm fluid rises and a cold one sinks. Conduction is when the warm molecules excite the less warm molecules so they can transfer heat. But what about radiation? This is the important one. When it's a, in the electromagnetic spectrum, in the infrared area, we call it radiation because it radiates outwards like this and it has a radius. Radius is R. Oh, but when we get further from the heat, it gets way less hot. Remember, I told you to remember the inverse square law because it applies to everything. Gravity, light, heat, electric fields, magnetic fields, and even sound. Completing the rainbow. 
So we've got the last two, we've done five of them, and now we've got two more. This is the candela, it applies to light, and I have never used it <laughs> in my physics career. This last one is moles, it's just a number, that's all you need to know. Um, Brian, this we're just going to skip over that. Moles is just a number, that's, it's just an amount of things, like a dozen is twelve, like Avogadro's number is just an amount of things, and we can use it to find the number of particles. That's what we often use it for. So we have distance, we have time, we put those together, get velocity, we add a little bit of mass, completed, got a little bit more, we added current, got a little bit more, temperature, candela, and moles, and that is everything we learn. And this is how I teach physics in the public. <laughs>